Well, Linda and I have been on the road for about five weeks now, and during that five weeks, we've only spent two nights not in the trailer, and that was at a friend's house in Phoenix. The rest of the time, we've been camping every night on the road in places like this. And one thing that we require having is the proper knife, the right knife. What's the right knife, the best knife for traveling? One knife to rule them all. Is there such a thing? That would be like having the perfect pair of pliers, like this, or this, this one. These? Oh yeah, I think you get my point. There's not a perfect knife for everything, but there is a perfect camp knife for what we're doing. Let me show you. If you go out looking to buy a knife these days, the choices are st is staggering. Blade length blade shape, edge design, all the different things you'd be looking at. If you just go out to buy a hunting knife just to go hunting, it's staggering. Even just a camp knife. Now there's bushcraft knives. What's the difference and what do you need for having a good camp knife? First of all is the knife that <laughs> I always carry in my pocket. Uh, I'm not selling a brand or anything. This happens to be a Kaiser and I picked it out for the blade shape the blade is about three and a half inches. This one happens to be a, a kind of stainless, but the blade is fairly wide, heightwise here like this, and and then it tapers at the end here. This is perfect for slicing apples, and it's with that wide blade, it's great for spreading peanut butter. This is the knife that probably gets used 90% of the time, by me anyway, and the blade's not real thick either. It's thin, so it can do those slicing tasks. But whatever pocket knife you have, it's going to be the one that you reach for first. This is the knife that gets used most in cooking. It's, I don't know if it's a Russell or if it's a Green River, but once again, the, the blade is kind of wide. It's got what's called a sword grind. A sword grind means that it's one taper from the spine of the knife all the way down to the edge. There's no knuckle in here or anything like that, just one smooth taper. And it's not thick. This is a great slicer. Slicing meat, slicing apples, slicing cheese. This I would consider a perfect camp knife because what do you do in camp? You cook all the time. Here's the other favorite camp knife that we own. This is a Condor Kephart. They're not very expensive. It's a 1075 steel, but once again, it's that sword grind, just a flat grind all the way down to the edge. Really easy to maintain the edge here. Re very easy to sharpen a knife like this, and it's fairly thin. So if you're slicing steaks or slicing vegetables, it's got a nice, a comfortable handle with plenty of room on it. It's just a great knife. It's a great camp knife. So these three knives that I just showed you are, are, are perfect camp knives. Now if that's all you want to know, you can quit watching the video right now. But there's other things I want to show you because when you go to shop for a knife, this is what you're going to find. Okay, so up here is our three favorite knives. Now, this knife is a what's known as a bushcraft knife. And sometimes I use this because this knife has a purpose. Now, it's fairly thick spined here. And you'll notice that it's flat. It's, it's uh, the same thickness in here as it is at the spine. But then it's got what's called a Scandi grind. Now, these are a terrible camp knife. Because if you go to slice an apple, it just splits it like an ax. If you go to slice meat, you can't really tell what you're doing as you're slicing down. You can't really tell. This knife is made for carving wood. And for that job, for that task, 
This is perfect. It's also made for using with a ferro CM rod. It's got a 90 degree spine here that strikes a good spark. Here's why a Scandi grind is better for carving wood. Because of this, this uh, knuckle in the blade right here, I call it a chine. See how it rocks on that right there? So it makes it so you can control the depth of the cut like this really easy. Because it, so for carving, these things are great. because you can get this action into it. In comparison, this is, nice, this is a nice slicing knife with the sword grind, but it doesn't have that. It just lays flat on the surface. So if you get it in like this, although you're already coming up against the back to raise the front up. So it doesn't do this carving thing like that very well at all. So a Scandi grind is great for carving wood. This is great for carving a roast. This is a ferro CM rod, and this is what I'm talking about. So this knife is perfect for working around camp, carving tent stakes, making fire sticks, uh, cutting up little pieces of kindling and things like that. This is a woodworking knife, and you can use it for other things too. Like they would, like these Scandinavians would say, well, that's the grind we've been using for centuries or a thousand years. And they're right, except for one thing. This is a Mora. This would be a Scandinavian knife. And look what the difference is here. The thickness of the spine. So even though this is a Scandi grind, because it's thinner, it does cooking chores a lot, a lot more easily. This is just a little $10 knife, $15 knife. I like the carbon steel one, so it shows a little discoloration here. But you see what I mean? This one doesn't split things when you go to cut stuff. They say it's easier to sharpen because of this Scandi grind, and I wholeheartedly disagree because you have to sharpen, you have to lay this whole edge down on the sharpening stone and remove material from the whole edge rather than just the very edge. I don't like sharpening a Scandi grind. Now you can disagree with me, that's fine. But um, I know I'm not alone in that. And I just know that you see, I've got these other knives and I prefer to sharpen the other ones before I sharpen these. <laughs> This knife here is Linda's current favorite. Linda, I've purchased her, her knives for gifts since the day we were married 45 or 46 years ago. Uh, I'd have to count. Uh, anyways, <laughs> she's had so many knives. She loves this knife. This is, uh, this is a real steel knife. It didn't, it's a Sandvik steel. It's kind of, kind of a stainless, mostly a stainless, but it will stain. It's easier to sharpen, holds an edge really well. It didn't have this handle on it. I put that handle on it. I just wanted to show you her favorite. It's not a Scandi grind. It's more like a kind of a modified sword grind, but it does have a long taper here. She loves this knife. Of course, the handle is made just to fit her. So what other cutting tools do we carry? Well, I have this too big a knife, but I really like this. This is an Ontario uh, knife company. Uh, it's an RD7 Bush 1095 steel. And I guess, you know, if you could only have one knife, heaven forbid. But if, if I was gonna be stuck in the woods, it would be this one. Cause I can hack with it. I can split wood with it pound it with another piece of wood and, and split wood with it. It'll still do those fine cutting chores, but I don't go anywhere without it. I don't use it very often, <laughs> but I love to have an excuse to pull it out and use it. This gets used a lot. It does. It's a machete, about an 18 inch machete. We've used this several times on this trip, uh, going down roads that where we need to trim branches to keep them from brushing up against the car and the trailer. This is what we reach for first. 
my tomahawk. A hatchet might be better. I like the tomahawk because I can take this head off and use it by itself. But this also comes in handy. I, when we broke our leaf spring down in Nevada last year, it was the tomahawk that came out to shape that piece of wood that held the axle in place. And it just was real good for that. A hatchet would have done just as well. Just make sure you have a good hatchet. And they're great for splitting wood and, and, and things like that. And for cutting down some trees that are in your way and things like that, not live trees, hopefully. <laughs> and for cutting some sagebrush out of your way and things like that, that you need to turn around or something, you need to clear a space, the hatchet, come, or, hatchet or tomahawk is what you need. The feature of the tomahawk is you can take the blade off and now you can use it as a, as a spoke, shave, spoke shave or a plane or whatever to shave a piece of wood, which I did on that piece of wood that we used on that leaf spring repair. Anyways, this one's a cold steel trail hawk. I shortened the handle a little bit. I took the black paint off of it. I didn't like it. Kind of like the natural finish better. Last but not least, some kind of pruning saw, and this one gets used a lot too. I'd like to get a silky, a silky saw because they, they really have a good sharp edge. They're a little spendy, so I haven't sprung for one yet. But this cheap Fiskars has been going for years. It's still sharp. I, I got it on sale for seven bucks. I think they're like 10 or 12 normally. But yeah, this is probably about a 12 inch blade. Yeah, this one, this one gets used a lot. Pruning branches and things like that. So if we were heading out on the road and I could only take one knife out of all that I showed you, well, these three knives are the knives that come into play every day. My pocket knife, this uh, Green River knife or Russell knife, and this Condor Kephart. What would I suggest to you? This Condor Kephart. If I was going to uh, just head out on the road, only have one knife to do all my camp chores, still be able to carve a little wood, do little things like that. This isn't an expensive knife. This is really reasonable. And we've had it for years now, and it just keeps going and going. Any of you guys could afford this knife. I'll put a link to it. And as a matter of fact, I'm not selling them, but you might as well know how to look them up. It would be this one. So there you have it. So there is one knife to rule them all. Kinda. <laughs> Don't limit me to one, please. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.